The Deer Shoe story, in a sense, begins at one of the darkest times in our history, in the ashes of the Holocaust. A young couple meets in the DP camps of decimated Europe. They make their way by ship to Canada, to the city of Toronto, where they start to rebuild a family, a business. A few short decades later, it has all grown, and one of their offspring, a young man by the name of Rabbi David Hofstetter, plants a seed, a Gemara shear for working men, a seed which would flourish and grow beyond anyone's wildest expectations. Nearly 20 years later, the Dirshu organization is a household name across the Torah world, offering supportive programs for Daf Yomi Gemara, Yeshiva Bochrim, Halachic training for rabbis, and its very own daily Halacha program, Dafa Yomi Bahalacha, to tens of thousands of Jews around the world. Diane Yonasan Abraham, of the London based inn, summed it all up last year at the Dirshu South Africa launch. Vial Kulom, if I may say, without even a trace of exaggeration, I am profoundly moved almost to the point of emotion I find it difficult to speak. And that's quite hard for me. I can never normally shut up. <laughs> to have, if I may use the words, a younger man, a balabos, okay, a huge Talmud Chochem, but Rabbi Hofstetter and his wife, who have revolutionized the world in Torah learning, outdoing perhaps even Rav Shapiro's standards in advancing the concept of Dafayomi. And even the success Rabbi Shapiro saw in his lifetime, which just embarked upon the project, in a few short years, have revolutionized through their own efforts, their own resources, their own determination. And as you've heard, Rabbi Hofstetter's incredible own understanding and love of Torah have revolutionized Torah throughout the world in every yeshiva, koidal, shul, community, community center. And now they're threatening to do it, threatening in every kehila and every home and leaving no stone unturned, bring us music, a suda, concern, love and devotion that we should be exposed to our heritage. Think back in history to individuals who can stand on that plateau and measure up to what you, Rabbi Hofstadt, are achieving. It's not for me, I need cotton to say, but it's blindingly obvious to anybody that that which you and your Rebbetson have achieved in the last few years alone will go down in history already as having been one of the turning points without question in bringing Klal Yisrael to their Geula Bimheira of Yomain. The story of Dirshu in South Africa begins in 2012, at the start of the 13th cycle of the Daf Yomi Gomorra program. A group of Kolel scholars participated in the first monthly test, a rigorous examination on 30 double-sided pages of Talmud, studied in a month. Some two years later, the first cycle of the Daf Yomi Bahalacha reached its conclusion and it was time to launch the new cycle in South Africa. Over 600 people turned out for an evening of chizuk, music and inspiration. Adon Aloch Shukhanoch Chelko Haim Adon Alon. Dyson Aloch Shukhanoch Chelko Haim and Dyson Alon. Lost in Nishim in Loch Shukhanoch Chelko Haim, Lost in Nishim in Loch. Lobama Adim, Velo Beamo de Ossim. Tonight. I mean, we know that Johannesburg over the, the last number of years has become a true Mokham Torah. But if anybody had any doubt as to the status of Johannesburg as a Mokham Torah, all you had to do is come tonight to see hundreds and hundreds of people gathered for what? To launch a Dafyomi Bahalocha. You actually have to take a step back and say, is this real? Is this really happening? And the answer is it is. 
and, and, and to appreciate and to say that this is an amazing day that Hashem has created, that this tzibur has created, and it has the power of the words of Chazal, the Torah returns to the place that it was looked after. And uh, our ancestors in Lita looked after the Torah with dedication, with love, and the Torah comes back to a place where it was looked after with such dedication and with such love, and tonight is proof of that. And tonight is proof of how far our community has come, and now we're moving to the next level. A community that has seen the most amazing Balchuva revolution that the world has seen anywhere in sheer proportions, that there's been hardly a family in this community that hasn't been touched by the Balchuva revolution, and how this community has developed, and now we are maturing and going to the next level. The level of Dafyomi Bahalocha, Dafyomi in Gomorrah, the, 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 the community already has taken that on, and there are many Dafyomi Shurim across the town, and now Dafyomi Bahalocha, it's the next stage of the development of this community, and it's something that we can be enormously proud of as the Johannesburg Jewish community, proud and also grateful at the same time. Dirshu, Dirshu means the search. The search for Hashem. And it is, that, it is that dimension that has so defined our community. And Achran Achran Chaviv, I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to this wonderful community for their warm welcome, for their exemplary show of Achtus, of unity, Kovarat Taira, and the remarkable sense of commitment. Since the start of the Dafa Yomi Bahalacha in South Africa, there has been no shortage of commitment. An overwhelming number of participants turned out for the first test at Osamer Glen Hazel, armed with the first month of hard-earned knowledge. Since then, the tests have become a monthly fixture on the Johannesburg calendar. A chance to connect with other Dirshu learners, and to feel the satisfaction of knowledge and the sweet pleasure of accountability in Torah. As Yeshu took hold in South Africa, multiple shirim were started in various shuls and communities, and an online community burst into life. The Yeshu South Africa website, logging tens of thousands of listens in the ensuing months, mostly in South Africa. Through the year, new Dirshu Sforim have been offered as incentives for successful participants, making sure that committed Torah leads to even more opportunity for Torah study. Through the year, we've also had powerful messages of motivation from various of our Gadoilim and Torah scholars, helping to inspire the continued commitment to our learning of Halacha. So the participants in the Kenyan Halacha program of the issue. This is not only the time that they learn, it's the time, it's, it's the whole day becomes different, the whole day becomes governed by the halachas, the whole day becomes elevated, the business becomes elevated, the home becomes elevated, everything becomes elevated through the Torah that one learns. And the participation in the program that's been learned all over the world under the auspices of Rav David Hafstad Shlita, the Nasi, the founder, and the Ruach Chaim of Dishu, is a tremendous, which is a tremendous program, and it's been Miraim and Mudim with Halacha all over the world, and everyone's joining in together in this Halicha is Olam, Halacha is Olam, Halacha is a worldwide Halacha program, and we should be Zaycha to the Halicha is Olam. To go on Kagamashi Kano, the musical tzaddik Mehdi Was a big tzaddik, a big rabbi. The name is the Magid from Kelem. One time he gave a speech, Shvuas, only for two minutes. What he say? He says, if in the whole world will be only one Jew, and this Jew will say one time, Baruchu Baruch Shemo, is a word that the whole world to to, to, to build the whole world, to create the whole world. For one Baruch Hu, Baruch Shemo, is worth to create the whole world. Then it says one Omen 
is like thousand times Baruch Hu Baruch Shmo. Then he says, one aloche, one aloche is like thousand times Omen. Again, only for one Baruch Hu Baruch Shmo is word that God created the whole world, Shomayim Vohoretz Vechol Asher Bohem. Omen, one Omen is like thousand times Baruch Hu Baruch Shmo. One aloche is like thousand times omen. This explains you the greatness because this is the Rotz Nashem. HaKadosh Baruch Hu built this world to be there. Vosuli Migdosh Veshochanti Besoichom. God says, I want to be in you. In, in the aloche, this will make you, if you're going with the aloche, then I can be with you. If you have a car. You receive, when you, when you receive your car, you receive the book. The book says to you, is the brakes, is the clutch, is this. If somebody will go in, in the car and they don't know anything, I will do, I know what I do. God forbid, it will be killed. If a car needs a safer to behave in, ride the car, your life, your life is not only in this world, your life is also boilum abo. Remember, Tone di Vey Elio, Kolashoyne Alochois Bechol Yoim, Muftachloi, Shuben Oilom Abo. Broche Vatsloche Vesiate di Shmai. I would like to speak much more, but here I see I'm so busy with speaking. Hashem will give you Naches. Every day that you learn the Daloche and you Chazar Daloche, you notice, dance and say, ברוך אלוהיכנו שבראונו לכבודוי ויבדלונו מן התוהים ונוסה לנו תוירס אמס וחי אוילום, בוט מיץ חי אוילום פוראבר, נוטה בסוכנו. Torah is the guide to life. Torah is not just a matter of involving oneself, immersing oneself in some theoretical academic study. Torah is the study of life, of reality as it is. The description that the Bar Yolam, the Creator Himself, has given us of every element that He created in every situation that he makes happen, just how to deal with it, the correct way of dealing with it, the correct attitude, the wise way of living, the way of life as Hashem sees it. And we of all people, Asher Baruch Harbonu Mikolo Amim, we of all people on the earth were given this commandment to learn it, and of course, all Tariag mitzvahs to live them. V'shinan tom levanecha. Impart wisdom. Levanecha. Vanecha elu atalmidim. A mitzvah kol chochum v'chochum to teach. What is it that has to be taught? Shehu divrei tara mechudodim b'ficha. V'shinan tom clarity, knowledge. So first and foremost, we have to recognize that what we're learning is once again not just something theoretical. There's an attitude that we're picking up in everything we learn. And certainly, when one learns halacha l'maisi, it's obvious what attitudes he's picking up to live correctly, exactly how to live one's life, how to be mekayim, the rotzen Hashem, the mitzvahs of Hashem. And of course, Vishinantam, learning Torah for the sake of knowing Torah. It's not just the experience, beautiful as it is. There's no greater tainug. There's nothing more pleasurable than being misamek, than using, using every bit of brain power you've got in trying to understand the sugya, trying to understand the message, the underlying message of whatever, whatever sugi it is that you're learning. Oh, the tainug, the tainug of the beauty of the svara, of course. 
But at the end of the day, one has to take responsibility for knowing, learning to know. A Talmud Chacham, as defined by Chazal, is one who knows Kola Terakula. It's not defined by how big a Lamdan he is. Although, of course, if his knowledge of Kola Terakula is totally superficial, then his knowledge of Kola Terakula is lacking. But it's knowledge of Torah. It's as your Miss Amik. Remember it. Chazer it. Walk around with it. Carry your Torah. Talmudoi biyodoi. Dear Shu has, of course, been machadish, that forgotten eker of Torah, which is to retain the information, to remember what you learn, to make an effort to remember what you learn. Where of course, Gedol Yisrael are famous for walking around with Kola Terakula, understanding that it's the achrayas of every one of us to know, to remember, to chazer, and to know with clarity. And the second, to understand that Torah is Lamais. So, of course, making sure that there's a focus on halacha as well not only sees to it that we learn halacha, that we know our achayim, that we know what to do every day, that we know our tzitzis and our tefillin and our tefillin and so on, and that we know Hilchah Shabbos, we know Hilchah Yantif, we know Hilchah Pesach. Not only that, but it definitely sets an attitude within us. We remember that Torah is lemaise, and then that filters back to all of our learning and it doesn't make a difference what someone is learning. He's got to know this is for real. And when you say a svar, you've got to believe in it in a way that you would pask in that way. And when you walk away from a sugya, you have to be holding it in your hand, learning, knowing this is what I have to know, what I have to be able to live, what I have to, what I have to be able to put into practice. As the Dafa Yomi Halacha program approached the complex halachas of tefillin, a special volume of the illustrated Mishnah Brura was printed in South Africa, turning the particular section from one of the most complicated into perhaps one of the most rich and enjoyable. I spent on the Sefer on tefillin, I spent five years, about eight hours a day. The Satishmai Hashem helps, and it came out with a beautiful Sefer, Baruch Hashem. And thank you for buying it and learning from it. To bring the halachas to life, a hands-on exhibition was held, exposing us to the fascinating world of Safros and the manufacture of tefillin. And as we journeyed through the complex halachas of tefillin, we were also treated to a look at the mystical side of the halachas by one of South African Jewry's most well-known scholars. Now that Dushu is learning the halachas of Tfilin, uh, let's say a few words about Tfilin, origin, depth, meaning. Rabbi Tatz touched on some of the most esoteric aspects of Tfilin, giving us a small taste of the depth behind each mitzvah we perform. But these three aspects of immortality were once connected to the human skull, and the human, the higher aspects of human Hashem inhabited those, and we are bereft of those. Tefillin is the opportunity to reconnect those immortal aspects. The mitzvah of tfilin, any mitzvah means a connection. The word mitzvah, but safta, chada, sevet, mitzvah means a connection. Tefillin is unique. Tefillin is not just another mitzvah. Each mitzvah has its uniqueness. But the mitzvah of tfilin is an opportunity to reconnect to an immortal level. One wears the crown that indicates the regal and royal status of a human being. This is the deep meaning of the fact that people look at someone with tefillin on is a natural awe and fear. And the reason is that you're looking at a person who is now expressing the higher dimensions of the neshama. And therefore, those who study the halachas of tefillin, of course, each halacha is specifically connected. Each detail, like all halachic manifestations of Torah, each detail in the midst of manifests something spiritual. But the general idea of tefillin is that one is putting on the crown, the original symbol of royalty, which is a connection between this world and a higher world. But why the Mishnah Brura? Aren't there hundreds of others for him that can guide us in the Jewish way of life? Diane Abraham addressed the issue at last year's launch. There's a challenge. 
The great challenge is, it's so difficult to do. Halacha has become such a great corpus of Jewish academic scholarship. From the times of the Mishnayas, expanded in the Talmud, in the pages of the Talmud, expanded by all the commentaries of the Rishad and the medieval commentators, codified by the Rif, the Rosh and the Rambam, and then collated by the Tur, the son of the Rosh, making the first attempt to having a co collected, collated body of work to codify Jewish law, elaborated on by the Beis Yosef, Rabbi Yosef Cairo, and he distilled it and crystallized it in the Shulchan Aruch. Then the Ramah adds his notes, the Morgan of Rome, the Taz, the Bira, Grab, Kveig, Pise, all the before, and just added and became greater and greater in the swelling of that body of halacha. To find a simple halacha, to find a simple conclusion, and how you conclude says the Chovetz Chaim can be so difficult. The Mishnabura therefore took the Shulchan Aruch, the crystallized conclusion, and then analyzed and gave a synopsis of the whole background and the debate from source to conclusion and application, bringing together thousands of years of scholarship in 20 minutes to half an hour learning one omud a day to give us that entree to the Torah's Chaim, that elixir of life. Until a few years ago, we all had excuses. Before the Mishnah Bura, you saw how hard it was to come to conclusion. Even having a Mishnah Bura, we had excuses. When are we going to get around to learning it? We're busy learning Gomorrah, running to Dafa, Yomi, all the things you want to learn. We need to know about the parish and about the Yom Tamar, everything else, all the Shailas. I don't have the peace of mind, the the Kop, I haven't got the, the peace of mind. The Chavetz Chaim says, people who don't learn, they don't have the peace of mind. It's like the Balabosta, who had a guest waiting, and she, she wasn't happy because the meal wasn't perfect, and the guest is waiting outside and only starving. Sorry, the meal isn't perfect. She didn't feel right about it, and he died in the meantime. Peace of mind, it's our lives. For Rabbi Hofstetter, it's not about finding excuses, but rather about responding to a calling. At last year's dinner, he threw down the gauntlet to the South African community. There's a small olive. There's a sound, there's a calling that we all have, and we can either choose not to hear it, or we can choose to hear it. And if we have a desire to fulfill the will of Hashem, that will be an overwhelming, powerful sound that we will hear very clearly. And if not, you can barely hear it at all. And we can always find the excuse that nobody told us. We weren't informed. Certainly, but Salal could have been told that. But if you have a desire, if you really want to fulfill the words of Hashem, then there's an overwhelming commitment. And you hear the sound powerfully and clearly unmistakably. And I want to give a yashikoyach to this wonderful community that are coming out tonight, Bleyayin Harab, en masse, that want to hear the words of Hashem, that want to hear the words of Hashem and want to fulfill it and hear the sound very clearly and are enthusiastically coming together to embark on this program. But ultimately, to keep hearing this sound, it's not going to come from these gatherings or these presentations. But to keep hearing the sound will come from your continued desire to fulfill the words of Hashem, to want to fill the, fulfill the words of Hashem, and to hear that calling that each and every one of us have. And this community which so exemplifies Chashiva Satayra, which so exemplifies reaching out to another year. This community which so exemplifies Achtus, the Achtus of Klal Yisrael. It is no wonder that this community is taking the lead in joining together with this program 
And it is no wonder that this community is embracing it enthusiastically. And now this community that has done so much and shown so much to the world in reaching out to Yidin and to Achtus in Yidin, if I may be so bold as a guest to make a demand, a request rather, to show the world again how one reaches out, how one comes together and joins Kal the Yisrael together in a unified effort to fulfill the will of Hashem. Diane Abrams was more forthright. But we had excuses because we don't have entree. Rabbi Hofstetter took away our excuses. We ain't got any excuses left. For those who don't know in English, in Cockney, eight means we haven't got halas, finished, kaput. We're finished. What are we going to say? We can't do it. Who can't find 25 minutes a day to attend the shir or hear it on the phone? Who says they? How are we going to have any excuses? We've run out of them. A system has been devised that we can know finally what we're doing, why we're doing and how to do it. And we can fulfill within our lives, not only learning Torah, but Torah which brings Lidei Masa into practice, which God loves and is being offered to us. It's being sponsored, publicized, advertised, printed, distributed, every sort of incentive. Simple challenge, Rabbi Isai. Think about the glory of the scholarship of the Chovetz Chaim, of Reb Chaim, of Kelm Klet Slabodke Mir, of Malat, of Bialystok. Think about all the names your grandparents and great grandparents rattled off. And think about the legacy of grandparents waiting to be taken by their grandchildren and great grandchildren. Grab it because it's your legacy. It's your heritage, your kvayd ha-toyra, your respect, your love, and your preservation of that respect through generations where they were challenged and may not have been able to be so observant, as we heard from Rabbi Kosovsky. Communities which were far flung and lost that ability at times to practice. But that kvayd ha-toyra, that love of toyra, that love of toyra scholarship never departed. It's your legacy. Mishnah Brura belongs here more than anywhere else because it's your grandparents and great-grandparents in Lita, in Ruslan, who had that mysterious nefesh and love of Torah which is so evident in this community. Listen, take it, seize it. I'm not talking about the World Cup. Seize it, this is your time. And build your future with it. That's the challenge of Ayishma, of your listening of you being the great community you've had, you've made yourselves, and the challenge you've created for yourselves in how you go to the next step of becoming a model community of scholars, of people who know what they do, why they do it and how, because their kvayd ha their honor of Torah, has led them to love Torah and inculcate their lives, your lives, and your children's lives with Torah. And I'm not talking about only those, the Ibliana are growing numbers among this community. We're fortunate to learn in wonderful schools in yeshivas, kodalim, here and abroad. I'm talking about the fathers and parents, and there'll be programs for the women as well to learn halacha, who may not have been blessed with the same education. Don't lead and live your lives through your children. Lead and live it through yourselves. You take on these programs and these projects and you'll see how you'll grow and how you'll be infused in your mitzvahs.